This video plans to compare the story of the original Resident Evil to its recently released remake counterpart. I'll be going through the remake's story and pointing out what the remake changed regarding the story and whether or not these changes were better than the original. Then at the end, we'll come together and see which one reigns supreme, either the original classic from 2005 or the revisioned remake of 2023. This is of course a story analysis, so spoiler warning for the RE4 remake going forward, as I will not be holding back once we begin. I would also say spoiler warning for the original RE4 and the RE2 remake, since we will be referencing some of those games' events, but the remake of the fourth game is the most important one, since I don't expect you to play three games just to watch this video. With that out of the way though, let's get started. So the first thing we see before we even start the game is a recap of what happened in Raccoon City. Already we can see that the tone of the game is much different than the original. The remake goes into detail as to why this day is so significant for Leon and how it changed him permanently. It references all the deaths that Leon saw that day, like the Lieutenant, Ada, and Kendo's daughter. His last line in this section is, this time things will be different, which is quite important for the story going forward. The original doesn't even touch upon these details at all, it just summarizes what Umbrella did and what happened after Raccoon City, and that's it. I personally like the remake's decision to add more drama to the narrative as it was severely lacking in the original. As such though, quirky one-liners are not going to be a common occurrence in the game given its more serious tone. Leon in the original was cocky, he knew he was the best, and knew that Salazar and Sadler weren't going to beat him, so it's no wonder his ego is through the roof throughout the game. In the remake though, Leon isn't as cocky, so a lot of his famous one-liners are gone from this entry. For example, his, no thanks bro when first meeting Salazar, and the I've got gum line when responding to Luis's question if Leon had any smokes are not present in this game. He also doesn't even tell Hunnigan that he got tied up in some things after literally being tied up just moments ago. While I do miss some of the lines, especially Luis's when he calls Mendez the big cheese, it doesn't really fit with the tone of the game. In fact, adding it to the remake would clash too much with the current story and cause a conflict of emotions, as Leon would go from having a heart to heart with Ashley to making fun of Salazar for being old in just a matter of minutes, and tonally that doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean all the one-liners are gone or that Leon doesn't say any new ones of his own, but the original definitely has a lot more. This change is like some of the ones we'll talk about today. It's not a subtraction or addition of content, it's a complete change, so it's hard to say whether the remake or original is objectively better in this regard, since Leon feels like two different people at times, so it's less about which one is better, more about which one you prefer. Personally, while I do miss the overly sassy Leon of the original, I think I prefer the remake's take on him instead, given how the story will play out in the chapters to come. Soon after, this is where we get introduced to a lot of the gameplay systems and get through the iconic village opener. One thing I will give to the remake is that it manages to keep that feel the original had, despite most players already knowing what to expect. Anyone who's played the original knows about the village ambush and likely knows the proper routes to take. While the remake does change things quite a bit, it's still largely the same, yet despite that, the ambush felt as fresh and scary as it was the first time through. This not only goes for the village, but for the gameplay in general. Oftentimes the game's story and gameplay are intertwined with one another. This is especially true for Resident Evil, as the whole premise of the gameplay is to feel scared, tense, and nervous. And not just the jumping out of your seat when a Ganado grabs you kind of scared, more so will I have enough ammo to make it through this fight kind of scared. Running out of ammo mid-fight, or really at any point, is almost certain death, and not knowing what comes next, coupled with the fact that you know you won't have enough supplies to take on the encounter anyway, gives off this very scary feeling, and I felt that both in the original and the remake. It always felt like I was one bad encounter away from losing a large chunk of my supplies, so I was on high alert at all times. Even though RE4 is more action horror than survival horror, the remake felt the exact same as the original when it comes to build-ups and scares. I fought Mendez, Salazar, the Verdugo, and all the others before, but the remake still had me on the edge of my seat during each fight, which is extremely impressive. Towards the end of the chapter is where we get to meet everyone's favorite Spaniard, Luis Serra. If there was one major complaint I had about the original, it's that pretty much every character was underutilized with the exception of Leon, and Luis was at the top of my list. His performance on screen in the original was almost laughably bad at certain points. As usual, he ends up locked up somewhere and is forced to stay there until Leon saves him. He then immediately leaves after they escape, comes back for an ambush mission, then leaves again only to return claiming that he has the sample of the Las Plagas they were looking for, only to somehow drop it on the way there, and then after all that he dies the moment he finds it. All of it is just bizarre. Thankfully the remake gives him a bit more screen time and a much more important role in the overall story. Luis in the original was a researcher who used to work for Umbrella before the whole Raccoon City thing occurred, but now he's working with Sadler to test the effects of the Las Plagas parasite. Eventually though, he started to catch on to Sadler's real intentions with the parasite and felt immense guilt over what he had done, which is why he betrayed him and allies himself with Leon and Ada. In the story though, he pretty much does nothing, which is a real shame as he had the potential to really stand out as a prominent side character in the Resident Evil series. His remake version is far superior though, as not only does he not die at his usual spot in the timeline, which gives him more screen time, but any time he does appear, he always does his best to take center stage. 
Luis takes the time to explain the Lost Plagas parasite and what it's doing to Ashley and Leon, as well as talk about his past and the experiments he did under Sadler. Most of this information was delegated to text files found throughout the game, which isn't bad by any means, but hearing from the horse's mouth is a lot more impactful. It also characterizes Luis more, as these talks he had with Leon made him really stand out in the remake. Sadly, Luis still dies, but his death felt like it had more meaning to it. Luis was someone who recognized the error of his ways and tried to atone for what he did by doing the right thing. And while he wasn't able to see it all the way through, he still thinks about Leon and Ashley in his final moments as he gives them a key to his lab, which is where they get the parasite taken out. Leon also offers to light his last sig, which just shows how much of an impact he had on him. It's also the first time Leon will meet Krauser, and one can immediately see that he's gone off the deep end already. Luis felt like a genuine person, and while it does suck that he didn't get to see the credits in the remake, his character had developed far beyond what his original form was capable of. He was our main source of knowledge on the Lost Plagas, and he played his role perfectly. The same cannot be said for Ada, though. Ada is still my least favorite character in this whole game. Her presence in this game is kinda pointless, even though her actions here set up the events of Resident Evil 5. Once again, just like Luis, her lore is more intriguing than her story. Ada is obviously a spy of some sort who works for a secret company that we don't know about at the time. She's here to take the Lost Plaga sample back to her organization, which mirrors a lot of her actions in Resident Evil 2. She was always trying to find ways to use Leon so that she could further her own agenda, and she continues to do the same here. In the story though, Ada's main claim to fame is infamously arriving on scene, saying a sentence or two at best, and then refusing to elaborate on what's going on here. My absolute favorite, and I mean this sarcastically, is later when Leon meets Krauser. Ada breaks up the fight the two boys are having, and then literally leaves a second later before Leon can get a word in. She does this at least three times throughout the story, and it's incredibly annoying to have to sit through it because you know Ada's just going to stall us and not further the plot. I know this has kind of become her thing at this point, but just because it's what she's known for doesn't mean it's a good thing. In the remake, Ada is the same way, and Capcom sadly didn't take the opportunity to delegate some time in the script for her. On the topic of her, while not a criticism of her, she is present here, so I figured I should mention this, but I was kind of disappointed in her reveal, mostly because of what RE2 had potentially set up. In both RE2 and RE2 Remake, Ada supposedly dies only to give Leon a rocket launcher to use against the final boss. In the original though, you get the sense that Leon knew it was her, since he calls out to her during the fight. In the remake, Leon has no clue where the rocket launcher even came from. I figured this was going to affect RE4 since to Leon's knowledge, Ada is dead. But when the two meet, there's barely any emotion coming from him, almost like he knew she was alive the whole time. Leon and her did leave off on a very important discussion, which was when Leon confronted her about not being the FBI agent she claimed to be. But I feel like Leon should have been a bit more surprised about this interaction. Hell, Ada herself says, huh, you don't seem surprised. Interesting. It is entirely possible though that just like his original version, Leon in between games found out about Ada and her work, which is why he's not surprised that she's alive. Regardless, probably the worst crime Capcom committed when making Ada was not including her side story separate ways. I don't know if Capcom plans to add it later as DLC, but I find that even more jarring than if they didn't. Separate Ways was a sub-story that allowed you to play as Ada for a few chapters, and while it's an alright piece of content, at least to me, it's strange that this wasn't in the remake. It's not like the original and is only unlocked after beating the game, it's not integrated into the story by giving Ada her own chapter, and it's not even extra paid content, it's just non-existent. And that's incredibly disappointing, not just because it was already in the original, but it continues to hurt Ada as a character, as now she's even less interesting than she already was in RE4, thanks to a piece of content revolving around her being missing from the official release. At the very least though, thanks to her, we got to see Wesker in the RE engine, so silver lining. Our final character, at least when it comes to good or morally questionable individuals, is Ashley, and I wanted to save the best for last because Ashley is fantastic in the remake. Ashley and Leon were part of a very typical trope relating to the damsel in distress. Ashley went a bit too far with that trope for my taste as she is utterly useless at just about every point in the game. I don't mind the idea too much, and admittedly I found the dynamic to work well at times, but Ashley from the remake showed me what I was missing. She herself has not only changed, but lots of small details were taken into consideration when designing her. Ashley is still very much a damsel in distress kind of character, but she shows genuine growth throughout the remake, which makes her feel like, once again, an actual person. Instead of just hiding and forcing Leon to do all the dirty work, Ashley goes out of her way to help Leon as best she can. During the ambush with Luis, both he and Leon finish off the Ganados and then discuss what next steps to take. In the remake, despite being told to hide, she eventually leaves and instructs the boys to follow her to safety. She also, and this was a lifesaver, throws these blue lanterns down at the infected armor so you have an easier time killing them. I really like the direction they took Ashley in this game, as she showed that she genuinely cares about Leon and will go to great lengths in order to help him, which is where her mission comes in. Ashley's playthrough was quite short and not incredibly interesting, as all she really does is just find her way to Leon by taking an alternate route using a key she found. But in the remake, Leon ends up getting trapped by Salazar and Ashley has to go find a way to release the lock. 
This takes her through some pretty terrifying areas as it changes from an action horror game to one of those more standard horror games like Outlast, where anything you do to the enemies is just meant to slow them down since you're too weak to actually kill anything. The game also fully utilizes the new stealth mechanics of the remake, which I found to be quite useful in certain situations such as this. Ashley in the beginning was very much the Ashley we remember, and the game hammers this home as she can be seen covering her ears once the fighting starts so she's not used to the loud noise. Over time though, she starts to feel more confident in herself. She's still not capable of doing much on her own, but she's taking a lot more initiative this time, such as when she willingly gets into the bulldozer so she can create an opening for them to walk through. She didn't do this because Leon told her to, she did it because she knew she could and also wants to show Leon that the two can work well as a team. In fact, this dynamic these two have is probably my favorite part about the whole remake. Ashley's care for Leon and Leon's motive to not let what happened in Raccoon City happen again created this incredible dynamic that sees these two constantly looking out for one another in times of crisis and also check in once in a while. After a fight, Leon might ask Ashley if she's doing okay, to which she'll usually respond that she's doing fine. It's incredibly minor, but it shows that Leon does care about Ashley's well-being and sees her as more than just a job. He wants to make sure she's safe not because it's his duty to protect her, but because he cares about her. The two aren't just all doom and gloom though, as the game gives them ample time to joke around and build their relationship, like when Ashley is shocked to see Leon swing from a chandelier, or when she channels her inner Jill Valentine. Like any relationship though, it's inevitably going to go through some rough patches. In re Force case, about 90% of it is a rough patch seeing as Ashley keeps getting kidnapped and the two are separated for hours at a time. But the one I'm actually more focused on is when Ashley turns on Leon. As we know, Leon and Ashley were infected with the Las Plagas parasite and Sadler is able to control those that are infected by it, which is why he was able to force Ashley to stab Leon. This scars her as she doesn't want to be near Leon anymore, not because she's scared of him but because she's scared of hurting him. At this point in the game though, Leon's gone through much worse. Hell, you've probably died a few times already, so a cut to the hand isn't going to kill him, not by a long shot. But still, this is a terrifying moment for Ashley, as she was just forced to hurt the one person who's trying to save her, and she doesn't want to kill Leon while being under Sadler's control. This ends up coming back around much later toward the final few moments of the game, where instead of Ashley just blindly walking towards Sadler and away from Leon, she is instead forced to shoot Leon but somehow manages to keep him alive thanks to her resisting his control, but mostly because the bag was empty thanks to her firing off a few shots. Now, I don't think anyone who played the original thought Leon would actually die here, but still, it's quite intense and a lot better than Ashley just walking away from him like before. Their relationship really hits a peak right at the end, when the two are moments away from turning and you can see the desperation in Leon's eyes as he tries to make sure Ashley lives even if it comes to the cost of his life. Just like their relationship, I'm glad that the infection itself got a lot more attention this time around, as it's the main motivator within the story. If the characters don't get this out of their bodies, they're screwed, so all their actions hinge on getting this parasite out of them, and I'm glad that there was multiple times throughout the story that the game focused on our duo feeling the parasite getting stronger as the game went on. To be fair, the original did this on occasion too, like when Leon almost choked out Ada, but the remake definitely doubles down on this story beat. Overall, most of our main cast has vastly improved since their appearances in 2005. Leon has a different yet interesting personality, he's a lot less cocky but isn't afraid to throw out the occasional one-liner when he wants, and having the remake of 4 focus on his mindset and actions during the events of 2 was a very smart choice as it keeps the remake games in line with the remake canon and overall makes Leon a more complex character. Ashley and Luis showed incredible improvement by being more active throughout the script. Being able to do certain battles alongside Luis, battles in which he wasn't originally in thanks to him dying, were incredible and it was great to see him be more than just comedic relief. Ashley going from a damsel in distress to a more confident woman was a nice character arc for her. Seeing her demeanor change over the course of the game thanks to Leon were some of my favorite moments in the story, and the relationship the two have now was the highlight of the game. Ada is okay, I do wish we got to see more of her throughout the game, even if she doesn't explain things like she usually does, because I think implementing a chapter about her could have gone a long way, and could have given us more insight into her whereabouts throughout the game. Still though, 3 out of 4 ain't bad at all. These were the biggest changes of note in the Resident Evil 4 remake, but just like our last episode on the Dead Space remake, there are a lot of smaller changes that were also present that I couldn't fit cohesively into the script. For starters, I really liked Krauser in this game as opposed to the original. Krauser's first appearance in the RE universe was Resident Evil 4, so no one knew who he was and why Leon knows him. It was very hard to care about his situation with his past battles when I barely had time to meet the guy. The remake introduces Krauser a bit earlier than before and also has him be the one who kills Luis, providing the player and Leon a reason to remember him. The game also lays out some documents regarding the day that impacted Krauser the most, which is when his entire unit was killed by the US, as he claims, since the army refused to extract them out of their zone. This led to all of them dying but Krauser, which has immensely affected him. His mind is still very much stuck in that battle, and seeing him act like it was a war during this boss fight was really cool. I've always liked the layout of the boss arena, but the remake adds to it by throwing in a few new sections to ramp up the intensity. Plus, the game's updated knife mechanics, which include durability and parrying, make the fight more cinematic. 
Honestly, a lot of the boss fights and climactic moments throughout the game have this sort of cinematic feel to them. Like the dual El Gigante fight with Luis. In the original, it was just a fight, but in the remake it's made more cinematic by adding different things to the fight like Luis strapping dynamite to its back. There's also the minecart sequence that was a lot more cinematic than before and filled with a lot more action and thrills than the original had. Similar to Leon's personality, I think this one is more personal preference. If you like being able to do the fight and just figure out where to go from there, then the original will satisfy that. But if you like the bombastic, railroaded sequences where things are played out in a set order of operations, then the remake is more your style. The one boss fight though that is bound to catch some debate is the removal of the U3 fight before Krauser. Personally, I don't mind this, not only is the whole fight just weird as we're fighting on a very specific set of floating shipping containers in the middle of a cave, but U3 was literally thrown into the plot at like the 11th hour, so if I'm being honest, I'm kinda glad it's not the remake. On the topic of bosses, Salazar and Sadler are just as good as before, and it was also nice to see Sadler use more mind control during the game. I also really liked how there were text files on the guys that would eventually become the Verdugo in the El Gigante we fight. I don't remember if these files were in the original, but either way, it's a nice attempt at humanizing the beings we face and reminding the player that just about everything we're killing in this game, even the more deformed looking creatures, were all human. The last detail that I noticed and I was very much a fan of was the constant showcase of plot relevant details. I talked about this just a moment ago when we discussed Luis, but the remake likes to show a lot more of the plot to the player this time around rather than just keep it all in text files. We end up finding a very huge hive where the cult dug out the amber that held the parasite, and even find an equally large piece of amber sitting in a storage room. In the original, these details were an afterthought, as all we knew is that the cult dug up the parasite that had been buried by Salazar's ancestors, and then they got to work experimenting on it. The remake does its best to point out these areas to the player whenever it can, which I appreciated. As a final note, I think you can tell given the contents of the video, but yes, the remake is far superior to the original in regards to its story. If I'm being honest, I've never been a huge fan of Resident Evil 4's story. Resident Evil 4 on release was way ahead of its time and revolutionized the gaming industry. But while its gameplay was incredible, I felt that the story was lacking in a lot of ways. The remake does its best to shave away the problems, but it's hard to do that without completely changing the entire structure. It does at least make the story more palatable, which is quite impressive given the plot it's working with. Resident Evil 4 though may not have an amazing story, but it has a lot of charm. Leon's personality is infectious and carried the entire game for me. Changing Leon's personality had me worried about the quality of the story, but I was more invested in the relationship going on between Ashley and Leon that I could care less that his original personality was reshaped to a more serious attitude. And Luis and Ashley taking a more active role in the plot rather than letting Leon handle everything was a great decision, as it characterizes them more than just the damsel who always needs Leon's help and a Spaniard who dropped the plot relevant item halfway through the story. But these were just my thoughts on the game. Let me know what you thought about the remake in the comments down below. Either way, thank you for watching the video today. Like and subscribe if you're new for more story analysis like this. Check out the Dead Space video for another remake comparison or any other video on the channel for a more in-depth critique of a game's story. With that out of the way though, thank you to my returning viewers for coming back to another video and take care everyone. Goodbye.